So if you watched my last video, you would have seen me drawing this cat, this pose. And that was just a rough sketch. I spent a lot of time picking away at my drawing after that rough sketching stage. So this is the first step that I came up with. This was the first, um, what I would call good drawing that I came up with after the sketch. I mean, a sketch is a good drawing too. Don't ever think a sketch isn't a good drawing, but this is my planning drawing for my watercolor painting that I'm going to do. Um, but you'll see in a few minutes that I wasn't perfectly happy with this and I do have another edition of it after, but we'll talk about this one first. So what I was really aiming for in this drawing was getting a lot of good rhythm. Um, you know, just having things like lines, like this line here coming up and taking a good rhythm and flow up here. Um, things like, like this, you know, just that nice rhythm and flow around connecting with here. Um, yeah, just a nice, nice flow like this and, and the feet, I just love the, the little bit of rhythm I got in the feet, you know, kind of, I, I sort of aim for that sort of dancing rhythm that gives the drawing a lot of character and that's a personal style thing. Everybody's different. But this is what I like to do. Um, again, you know, connecting lines that add to that rhythm. The, I always like to squeak in a little smile with my cat drawings. So the smile comes up like this and then it connects for a nice flow right here. And this connects here. And we kind of take that for granted that, you know, it would. We know this line is down from here, but I really like to kind of accentuate that and, you know, really feel that flow when I'm putting those lines in and... And here is another one from here to here. You know, the, the flow of the whiskers and stuff and, and just getting the, the lines to just play a rhythm of their own. Um, as I said, this I wasn't totally satisfied with this one as my final one. What I found is I thought that the cat was too tall and even too broad across here to really be tiny. The cat that I was trying to draw, the cat's name was Tiny. Um, my sister's cat when we were kids. So I felt like I needed her to look more petite and small. She was called Tiny because she was a very tiny cat. She was a long haired cat, but it wasn't all smooth flowing like this. She was more scruffy, I guess, or um, how did I word that? I wrote that down, what I wanted to call it. Kind, of, kind of scruffy, fluffy. So this was the one, this was the next one that I did. And I feel that looks much more like tiny. So I've still got those nice, the flow, because what I did um, is I traced this drawing partially and I'll show you kind of what I did here. So in order to make her a little shorter, there were a lot of things about it that I did like. So I put the tracing paper on, I trace, that's the only time I trace is when I trace my own drawing. Because then I don't have to draw the whole thing over again. I mean, drawing practice is always good, but sometimes you want to get on with things too. So I think it's fine to trace your own drawing. So things are a little bit different. So what I did first was because I like the head, I guess I changed a bit more than I thought on here. I like the head for the most part, so I traced her head making this a little narrower while I was at it. And to shorten her up, what I did was once I got her head traced and and about down to here, then I moved the paper down to shorten her up because I liked her paws how I did them. And then I traced them and then I kind of, you know, moved it around you kind of get used to doing it your own way. I kind of moved it around just to be able to fill in the space in between. And eventually I ended up shortening her that way rather than drawing her all over again. Um, and as you can see, I added a lot of scruffy fluffiness to her. And you'll notice too that I, that I added a piece of paper, a piece of tracing paper here because I found I, I had some scraps. So I cut a piece off and taped it onto here because I needed a bit to to add her tail here. And that's another thing. Her tail was hidden in the photo. And if you watched the last the last video, you'll know that this actually 
the photo that I used and that I'm showing here was not actually tiny. It was a cat that looked a lot like her. And um, I showed the picture of tiny to show that they are very, very similar. So I, I actually forgot that I was not drawing tiny when I was drawing that cat because they look so much alike. But my memories of her, I remember her being more scruffy fluffy and the photos and stuff that I showed you. Um, so anyways, I think I interrupted myself there. I was talking about adding this scrap here. I, I, I like to save my resources and, you know, because art supplies are precious. So if I have some scrap paper, I'll just do stuff like this and you'll find your own way. So I, I added the scruffy fluffy, um, after I trimmed her down to the right size. Um, I just wanted that really scruffy kind of look. And, and as I was saying too, that her tail her, the tail in this cat was not shown in the picture um, it, because it was around the back of the cat. But I, I really wanted the tail in to add to the flow because you notice how the tail kind of comes like this and goes up with the flow here. Adds to the rhythm of the whole cat, you know, kind of up and around here and then shoom, down like that. It adds to the rhythm, rhythm and it really, it unifies the picture and it gives character and style. And character and style are such personal things and you will find your own everyone is different there okay what's next how I shortened it and the scruffy fluffy and then once I was happy with this picture then the transfer and sometimes I might even if I wasn't happy with the second one I might even take more tracing paper and trace my drawing again you know, use it to your advantage. It's great. This is Kansan tracing paper, and it's apparently the most transparent paper tracing paper in the world. It's it's awesome. Okay, so transferring the drawing. I'll talk about my composition in a few minutes here. Um, carbon paper down on the good watercolor paper. And then, because if I put the tracing down on the carbon paper like this, I can't, it's hard to see what I'm doing because of the color of the carbon paper. So I put a piece of paper in between. This is just kind of a buffer just to know it's in the right spot. And then I would trace my drawing again onto here. Um, and it, while doing so, it transferred my drawing onto the good paper. And there it is. And composition. I chose this composition. I struggled. I moved this around all over the place before I decided and that's another reason why tracing your drawing is really good because then you can kind of play with the composition. You can decide, do I want it here? Actually, let's put this under here just to give you a better idea so we don't see that. So, you know, I moved it around. I thought that would be a nice composition. I like space. I like a lot of negative space. Um, everybody's different. And, you know... I like to avoid right in the middle. It's it's just not very interesting to me. Um, having her tail go off a bit there, I liked that one. I really like that. I really hemmed and hawed. And then I put her over here. And that's pretty close to what I ended up with. Um, just a sec here. I put her over here. And I really, really liked that composition. And I thought it would give me just the challenge that I needed to. Because I felt like it kind of shows that cattish attitude um, where, you know, I'm just going to sit here with my back to you. And what I've, what I've always been told and heard is that actually is a way of a cat telling you that they trust you if they can sit with their back to you. So, and then I've got all this nice negative space to play with and you'll see the kind of cool things I'll do with it when I start putting watercolor onto this drawing, which I plan to do a video of. And so I just thought it would be a really good challenge to have this empty space on the on the back side of her. And so I'm really looking to forward to the challenge and what I do with it. So that's, I guess it's a bit lower than I showed you. So that's where it ended up being. So that's just kind of a, a quick little video to show you and tell you this next stage in my drawing towards the watercolor painting that I intend to do of Tiny. So I hope you join me for the next one. I'm not sure what it's going to be all about, but it's leading toward me doing a watercolor painting of Tiny. So thanks for joining me and I will see you in the next video.